Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Many, many people have been asking questions about where the X, Y, zero position can be using the easel software on the X-Carve. Today, I want to try to explain it another way to be able to show you how you can move from that bottom left-hand corner to the center of your project. So let's get started. Before we start today's video, I've got a real big favor. Recently, YouTube has changed their algorithms. What does that mean? That means that my videos are not being recommended as often as they used to. How do we change that? I need your help in a most urgent way to be able to like this video, share it with as many people as you can, and subscribe by making these three simple changes. It really will trigger those algorithms to be able to get the recommendation back out to everyone in the woodworking community and the CNC world. So if you like the videos that I'm producing, you like my teaching methods, please subscribe, like, and share. Now, let's get back to today's video. I've had an awful lot of people ask about how I center the different projects to be able to carve. Now, and, and today I want to be able to try to explain this again. And this is an example where it's ready to carve and my XY zero position is right there in the center. Oftentimes I want to make 100% sure that this is centered when I carve it. And I can't guarantee that necessarily by using the XY zero at this position. And I know I've answered a lot of emails where I try to explain this to people, but I'll design it in this format right here so that I can see the results over in the preview. But when I get ready to carve it, I want to go right up here into Shape Menu and select the center dot. And then I want to set my X and my Y for zero. Now, it moves it off of the white work area, but that's okay because you can position your XY zero anywhere that you want. And just to be able to show you that, I want to come over here and do the simulate. And you can see that it carves just fine because it, you determine on the machine where the XY zero position is going to be. So this is what I'm going to carve today. Now I wanna take you over to the machine itself and show you because what you have displayed here must be the exact same thing that you display over on the CNC machine. Now I have my workpiece already clamped down and it's ready to be able to carve. And this is the other thing. The actual wood, if you're not real careful after you stain it, it will warp. So I'm making sure that it's clamped down on all four sides and that way this surface is still flat. But my XY zero position is right here in the center. And this is where I'm gonna move the bit over. I'm gonna slide this right over and I'm using a 90 degree V bit and I'm gonna move the machine right to this point. I'm gonna do that before I begin the checklist. So I'm going to open up the jog command, set this for one inch, and I'm going to go ahead and move that down. And that's going to be close. Now I'm going to go over to the machine again and get it set up exactly. I'm not sure that you can see that in the camera, but I'm actually very, very close. So I'm going to change the unit again and make my fine adjustment to get my XY zero positioned. Now over here, I'm gonna select the point zero 0.01, and now I'll finally set it up. Okay, I've made those very fine minor moves and I now have it exactly in the center. So this is gonna stay 
exactly there. And when I go through the checklist, that is going to be set as my XY0 position. So at this point, I'm actually ready to be able to carve. I have my XY0 position right in the center. I can preview it. I can see exactly what's going to take place. So I am going to go ahead and hit carve. Confirm the material. Material is secure. I am using a 90 degree V bit. And I am going to be probing. Now as far as the probe, I'm going to go ahead and raise this up higher. And let me set up the probe. Okay, I have the probe plugged in. I have the clip attached and I have the touch plate directly underneath it. So I'm ready to begin the probing operation. So I'm going to click confirm position. Clip is attached. Now I have to be able to touch that. So I touch the touch plate right up there to it to make sure that we have contact. I have the blue bar that I can select and then start probing. So that is completed. So now I can remove everything. Back at the computer, I'm just gonna click the Z probe is put away. Now it asks me to set the X, Y, zero position. Remember, we've already done that. So all I need to do is just hit this button and I'm done. So now I'm gonna turn the spindle on and then click this button and be ready to carve. For this carve, I just left the default settings to be able to cut these stars. Now this is a little bit slower than what I normally use, but the results, I think, still speak for themselves. These stars look absolutely fantastic. And one of the other questions that I've had is how deep do you need to go to be able to get that point right at the bottom? Well, it really doesn't matter. If you go too shallow, of course, you'll have a flat bottom. But if you go too deep, it will still stop when it reaches the point. And that's because of the geometry of the bit and how the software is designed. It's not going to go any deeper than when it reaches the point, regardless of what you have set in the computer system itself. So each of my uh, designs that I have in this project are set so that it will go right down to that center point making a beautiful star. While the CNC machine is finishing up the carve, I want to go ahead and lay out the stripes for this flag and be able to get ready so that once it's finished carving I can take it off and bring the union right on over and set it in place and be able to assemble this flag. The flag that I'm doing today is actually a small flag. This is 13 by the 24 and a half inch flag. And these stripes are one inch wide. And it makes for a very nice flag. And this is the, similar to the flag that I have on the wall in my uh, shop that you see on the beginning of each of my videos. Well, the CNC machine has reached the last star that it's carving, and once it completes this star, it's going to return back to that center point. It's not going to go to the bottom left-hand corner. Now, the other reason that I like this is that I can place the clamps along the edge and know that they're going to be out of the way because I do not have any um, possibility of being off-center by using this center point. Now that it's finished, it will return back to my XY0 position, which was in the center of the workpiece. So I'm just going to go ahead and close out all of this. I'm going to go ahead now and move the machine up and out of the way so that I can um, take the project off of the table. I think that turned out beautiful. No problem whatsoever. And my center point was right there. So you can see how easy it is to be able to use that instead of using the bottom left hand corner. So this gives you one more option in the projects that you do. That is one beautiful flag.
Now this project that I did today is part of a star that I have done for the various flags and you can see the various work pieces down here at the bottom. Now this project is a public share on the Inventable project page that is free to download and you're welcome to use these templates for the stars in your flags. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.